Welcome to the Catholic History Channel, where we cover important topics to Catholic history. Today, we're going to be looking at five important Filipino Catholics. Knowing about Catholics from the Philippines is important for several reasons. First, the Philippines is the largest Catholic country in Asia, and Catholics make up a significant portion of the population. Therefore, understanding the history, culture, and practices of Filipino Catholics can help to provide a deeper understanding of the country and its people. Second, Filipino Catholics have made significant contributions to the Catholic Church and the world at large. Many Filipino Catholics have been recognized for their devotion to the faith, their leadership in the church, and their contributions to social justice and human rights. Learning about these individuals and their stories can inspire and inform Catholics and non-Catholics alike, and can help to foster greater respect and understanding between different cultures and religions. Knowing about Catholics from the Philippines can broaden our perspectives and enrich our understanding of the wonderful global Catholic community. First up, we have Pedro Calungsod, who was a young Filipino catechist who became a Catholic martyr in the 17th century. He was born in 1655 in the Visayas region of the Philippines, and he became a lay catechist at a young age, assisting Spanish Jesuit missionaries in their evangelization efforts. In 1668, Pedro joined a Jesuit mission to the Marianas Islands, where he continued his work as a catechist and helped to build churches and schools. In 1672, Pedro and a Jesuit priest named Diego Luis de San Vitores traveled to the island of Guam to evangelize the Chamorro people. The mission was met with resistance from some of the island's traditional leaders, who saw the missionaries as a threat to their way of life. On April 2, 1672, a group of Chamorro men attacked the mission, killing Pedro and Father San Vitores along with several others. Pedro was beatified by Pope John Paul II in 2000, and he was canonized by Pope Benedict XVI in 2012, becoming the second Filipino saint after someone that we'll talk about later. He is venerated as a model of heroic Christian witness and fidelity, especially for young people. His feast day is celebrated on April 2nd every year, and he is the patron saint of Filipino youth and catechists. Pedro's life and death have inspired many Filipino Catholics to deepen their faith and commitment to evangelization. His story is a reminder of the sacrifices that many missionaries have made throughout history to spread the gospel and bring Christ's love to others. Pedro's canonization is also seen as a source of national pride and a testament to the enduring faith of the Filipino people. Second up, we have Jamie Cardinal Sin who was a prominent Filipino prelate who played a significant role in the social, political, and religious history of the Philippines in the 20th century. Born in 1928 in New Washington, Aklan, Sin was ordered a priest, ordained a priest in 1954, and went on to serve as a pastor, educator, and administrator in various dioceses around the country. In 1974, Sin was appointed Archbishop of Haro, and he later became Archbishop of Manila in 1979. As the head of the country's largest archdiocese, Sin was a powerful and influential figure in Philippine society. He was an outspoken critic of the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos and used his position to, to denounce human rights abuses and call for political reform. In 1986, Sin played a crucial role in the People Power Revolution, a peaceful uprising that ousted Marcos from power and restored democracy in the Philippines. Sin's radio broadcasts and calls for peaceful resistance mobilized millions of Filipinos to take to the streets in a show of popular protest. After the revolution, Sin continued to be an advocate for human rights, social justice, and interfaith dialogue, and he was widely respected as a moral authority in the country. Sin was created a cardinal by Pope John Paul II in 1985, becoming the first Filipino to hold that rank. He retired as Archbishop of Manila in 2003, and died in 2005 at the age of 76. Sin's life and legacy continue to inspire many Filipinos, particularly those who seek to promote democracy, human rights, and the common good in their country. His role in the People Power Revolution is seen as a testament to the power of nonviolent resistance and the importance of moral leadership in times of crisis. Next up, we have Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, a Filipino prelate who has made significant contributions to the Catholic Church and the global community. Born in Manila in 1957, Tagle was ordered, ordained a priest in 1982 and earned a doctorate in theology from the Catholic University of America. He later served as a, a professor and rector at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila before being appointed Bishop of Imus in 2001. 
In 2011, Tagle was appointed Archbishop of Manila, the largest archdiocese in the Philippines. As Archbishop, he became known for his emphasis on social justice, interfaith dialogue, and evangelization. He was also a vocal critic of the extrajudicial killings and other human rights abuses that have occurred in the Philippines in recent years. In 2012, Tagle was created a cardinal by Pope Benedict XVI, becoming the second Filipino after Sin to hold that rank. In 2019, he was appointed Prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, a key Vatican office responsible for promoting missionary activity and evangelization around the world. In this role, Tagle has continued to advocate for greater engagement with the world's cultures and religions, and has called for a renewed emphasis on the Church's missionary mandate. Tagle is widely regarded as a charismatic and compassionate leader who is deeply committed to the Church's social mission. He has been recognized for his efforts to promote interfaith dialogue, peacebuilding, and human development, and he has received numerous awards and honors for his work. His life in the ministry serve as an inspiration to many Filipinos and Catholics around the world, and his vision of a church that is engaged with the world and committed to social justice continues to shape the global Catholic community. Fourth, we have Mother Ignacio del Espiritu Santo, who is a Filipino religious sister who founded the Congregation of the Religious of the Virgin Mary, one of the oldest and largest religious congregations in the Philippines. Born in Manila in 1663, Ignacia came from a wealthy and influential family, but she felt called to a life of prayer and service from a young age. In 1684, she founded the community of lay women dedicated to the care of the sick and the poor. In 1692, Ignacia and several other women entered the Dominican convent in Manila, where they became members of the Third Order of St. Dominic. They took simple vows and lived a life of poverty, chastity, and obedience, while continuing their work of caring for the sick and the marginalized. In 1706, Ignacia and her companions were granted permission by the Archbishop of Manila to establish a new religious congregation, which became known as the Congregation of the Religious of the Virgin Mary. The new congregation grew rapidly and soon spread throughout the Philippines and beyond. The sisters became known for their work in education, healthcare, and social outreach, and they established schools, hospitals, and other institutions that continue to serve the needs of the Filipinos today. Mother Ignacia lived a life of prayer and self-denial, and she was known for her humility, simplicity, and devotion to God. Mother Ignacia was beatified by Pope Francis in 2018, becoming the first Filipina founder of a religious congregation to be declared blessed. Her life and legacy continue to inspire many Filipinos, especially women, who seek to follow her example of service, sacrifice, and holiness. She is revered as a model of sanctity and leadership in the Catholic Church in the Philippines and beyond. And last but not least, we have San Lorenzo Ruiz, a Filipino Catholic saint and martyr who is widely venerated as a hero of the faith and model of Christian witness. Born in Binondo, Manila in 1600, Ruiz was a layman and father of three who worked as a calligrapher and clerk for the Dominicans in Manila. In 1636, Ruiz was falsely accused of murder and sought refuge in Japan, where he joined the Jesuit mission and continued his work as a catechist. But Christianity was outlawed in Japan at the time and the missionaries and converts faced harsh persecution, persecution from the authorities. In 1637, Ruiz and his companions were captured and tortured, but they refused to renounce their faith. Ruiz and his fellow prisoners were eventually to, condemned to death by crucifixion, which was a common form of execution in Japan at the time. On September 28, 1637, Ruiz was martyred with 15 others, including two other Filipinos and several Japanese converts. He was the first Filipino to be martyred for the Catholic faith. San Lorenzo Ruiz was beatified by Pope John Paul II in 1981 and canonized by Pope John Paul in 1987, becoming the first Filipino saint. He is venerated as a patron saint of Filipino migrants and overseas workers, and he is also regarded as a model of fidelity and courage in the face of persecution. His life and death continue to inspire many Filipinos, especially those who are facing adversity or who are living far from their homeland. Thank you for listening. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe.